Hi, welcome to Made by Bertha. And today I'm gonna to show you three easy ways to make Easter bunnies with a washcloth. For the first bunny, this one is gonna have the pouch opening on the side there, just like the picture, so that you can put in your candy or your egg right on the side. So you're gonna lay out a piece of um, washcloth and you're gonna start on one corner and start rolling it towards the middle. Now you wanna keep the roll very tight and remove the tag or tuck the tag in if you have one on your washcloth. And just keep rolling and rolling, make sure you're super tight until you get towards the middle. Now find a piece of subject or something, I'm using a, a small uh, scissor to just hold it in place and then you're going to take the other corner, opposite corner, and start rolling that one as well. And roll that tightly and work your way towards the center. And fix any of the edges. Keep an eye on them so that you want to make them as tight as possible. Okay. And you roll until you get towards the middle. And then just start adjusting the edges and the corners the opposite corners because those are going to be your ears and pull them out and flatten them out so then you're going to take both sides and fold it in half so that the two edges meet and you're going to leave a little pouch there because um, that's where the, your treats or eggs are going to be fitted in so then you fold it in half now i'm trying out which side do i want the face of the bunny to be and the inner side is the one I'm going to tuck it in before I fold it in half again because I don't want the inner side to bulge out once I fold it for the face. Okay, and just take a look at it again and squeeze it in. Make sure you tuck that inner one in as much as you can. Okay, now next we're going to twist the ears a little bit because um, they're not facing the direction that I want. So let's just work on them until they look uh, pointing sideways. Okay, so I'm gonna twist some more here. All right, and just check the face to make sure it's nicely in. Okay. Then I'm gonna take a rubber band, wrap it around twice, and then wrap it around again once so that it'll be really tight for that face and the ears to stay put. Just adjust it some more, a little bit more, so that I can have the ears nicely facing the direction that I want it to. Okay, I think that's looking good. Okay, check the face, twist some more, and that looks good. Okay, so now you're done with the first half, and you have that little pouch on the on the on the side. Okay, now for bunny number two, you're gonna have the pouch on the top so that your egg or chocolate treat will be facing the top direction instead of the side as before. So you start with the same manner. You roll up on one corner, tightly towards the middle, and for the tag, you cut it or uh, tuck it in. And, uh, Hold one side and work on the other side. So from your opposite end, do the same thing and start rolling towards the middle. Now, depending on the washcloth that you have, uh, it could be really thin or fluffy. So just make sure that you work it in so that you tightly roll. So the yellow washcloth I'm using here is slightly thicker in weight than the white one that I had originally. So it's a little bit more finicky and needs to be uh, compressed more to keep it tight. And I'm stretching it out for the middle area because that's where the treats, gonna, the egg or the chocolate treat will sit in. And you're going to do the same thing and you're going to fold it, but this time you're going to fold it a different direction. Okay, as you can see, you fold it in a perpendicular manner and then work on holding it in place to get that face. So as you can see, this is a split face and we will sew this um, in the next part of the video, but you wanna just eyeball it to see 
how you want to uh, set the face. And as you can see, I'm squeezing the inside again underneath it so that the face comes out nice and fluffy on the middle and not sticking out on the sides. So you take a rubber band and then you're going to wrap it twice first and put it where you want the face to be and wrap it one more time and make it really tight. Okay, Just adjust it slightly so that the rubber band is in the right place and then you're going to look at the face again and just make sure the face and the ears are in good position. So in this particular bunny the face will be more difficult to deal with and so we have to do some sewing uh, to close that gap and the split into one piece but the ears are so much easier on this one and they fall naturally into place uh, with the direction that we folded the towel in. Okay, so just adjust it a little bit more and voila, you're done. And the hole is on the top for this bunny. Look at that. Okay, so this is compared to the first bunny where the hole is on the side and the second bunny which the hole is on top. So either way, the bunnies are cute. You just have to figure out your preference whether you want to sew or not. Okay, for our third and final bunny, as you could see, the bunny number three is going to be standing up and the pouch opening is in the center. So we're going to start the same way and take one corner and start rolling it. Make sure you're tightly rolling it and watch the sides and then take an object and just use something to be able to hold it and the nice scissors just an easy reach away and then you take the other side and start rolling it towards the center remember just keep it tight watch your edges and keep rolling until you get close to the middle so then roll both corners towards the middle and make sure that you are really tight on this one so fix the edges pull it apart and Try to make sure that you have no gaps on the other side there. Once you're done, we're just going to fold it in half, and bring the ears together. Now this time, as you could see, the hole in the middle is going to be where the candy is. So you take a rubber band and we're going to put it where the body will be separated from the head. So you're going to make the hole of where you're going to put the egg or the treat and make sure the hole in the middle is big enough to hold whatever it is that you want to put in there. Okay. So that's the body. And then the next step is we're going to start working on the head. So to do that, I'm going to take apart the ears a little bit and just make some room. Just open them up slightly, untwist them and all until you get enough room. And then you grab some polyester fiber or stuffing. And this you could find in Michael's, Joanne's, AC Moore. Wherever you have a sewing area, you'll be able to find the stuffing. It could be used for pillows and dolls and, and such. So you're gonna take a handful of that stuffing and put it right in the center between the ears. And you wanna make sure that you open up the ears enough to be able to close that stuffing. Okay, as you can see, I'm trying to push that all in there um, so that none of it sticks out. And the, if you need more stuffing to make the head bigger, just add some more. Um, but I think I'm going to make a smaller head here. And hold the location of where you want to separate the ears and the head. And then I'm going to use these clear rubber bands. And these you can get. Um, in the craft section as well in Joanne Michaels and this used to be very popular uh, for kids making bracelets and so you put the rubber band in place and I use a double rubber band on this one just to make sure it stays in place and adjust where you want the ears to be and where the head will be okay. 
and make sure there is no stuffing sticking out of the head. Um, but for now, we will close that up. And that's the third bunny. Like that. So you got the head, the ears, and the body. For the next step, since we've made the three bunnies, we're going to do the finishing touches with sewing the face, adding the eyes, and also the nose. We're going to start off with the yellow bunny, and we're going to sew the face together, and then we'll go also to the coral bunny. So I'm using the invisible thread, and this is a um, thread that you can find in any of the sewing sections in Michaels or AC Moore. And it's really nice thread to use because it's really clear and thin and if, if and it can work with any fabric color. Now you can use a different thread color if you have a matching thread for the washcloth color that you're using. But for me it's easier to just use the invisible thread so you don't have to worry about it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stick the needle in to the inside uh, in between the space for the face and I'm going to set up my anchor. So you pull the string a little bit in and you want to hold one of the edges where you had originally put the loop in or put a knot in and then you're going to make a loop and pull. And that basically just anchors your, um, your thread into uh, the fabric without it falling apart or falling out. Because sometimes when you just do that knot at the end, it's not enough and it'll just pop right out, especially with the washcloth being so, um, you know, spacey. Now, just work the face a little bit, just make sure that you have it nice and flat. I'm going to start on one side of the face here. Let's just grab a little bit, a little piece. And watch your thread, because it is so invisible, Sometimes it gets caught and you can't see it. So just make sure you check it before you move on to the next step. And I'm gonna take a little piece of the other side and I'm gonna hold the thread in my thumb and I'm gonna uh, insert the needle on the loop so that I can make a knot. Okay, and then you just let that loop go and pull it and you'll have a knotted section right there. Okay, and then you just uh, continue on and just stick your needle in uh, a little bit higher into the face. And then you're going to grab a piece of the fabric on one side and a piece of the fabric on the other side. And then you're always going to make that loop again. This time I make a double loop to just make it a little bit tighter. Watch your thread, make sure you're not catching on anything as you're pulling it out. And then I'm going to insert it again and just basically walking up the fabric into the next spot. And this time I'm going to just put it, grab one side of the fabric and on the other side to make the knot. Now, as you get more proficient, you don't need to go slow. You're basically seeing me take shortcuts and just grab uh, one piece a little bit on one side and grab a little bit on the other side without you know pulling the meal out and you want to make it small pieces on each side just make sure you catch enough to be able to knot it so then this is a different way instead of holding the a loop i'm just going to wrap around the needle itself this time i'm doing it twice and that also makes the same kind of knot. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward this piece and just finish up the rest of the bunny.
So the last step before finishing up the bunny, I'm going to make a knot here, make a loop in, with a knot. Okay. And this time I'm going to make a double knot. And I'm going to pull that knot close to the face of the bunny, but have a little bit of gap, maybe it's two, or two or three centimeters away from there. As you can see from where my finger is, there is a little knot. Hopefully you can see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, poke the needle in from the center to the side. And when you pull the needle out, you'll hear that knot pop a little bit. And that tells you that um, the knot is secure behind a piece of fabric. And so that's a nice way to end it so that you don't have um, tails hanging out on the fabric. But as you can see, the face is nicely closed. For the next step, we're going to do the finishing touches for bunny number three. And this time we're going to sew both sides of the face in the front there and also in the back. And then make sure your stuffing is nicely tucked in between the uh, two pieces of the towel. For this one, we're going to do a longer piece of thread as we're going to sew the front and the back of the face uh, in one shot. So I'm going to fo fast forward the video a little bit. Um, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. I know the thread is clear and it's a little bit hard to see, uh, but you're going to do the same thing as you did uh, with the yellow bunny uh, with the whip stitch. And you want to always start off with the anchor uh, in, in hidden a little bit so that you can have a nice place to get started. So I'll be back um, after the bunny face is uh, sewed on the front and the back. Okay, and I'm just about done here, finishing up the last stitch of the bunny's face. And I'm gonna make a double knot to be able to make that anchor for my tail. So I'm gonna try to pull that knot close to the face, but have enough space for me to be able to uh, pull it. Just, I don't know if you could see that where my hand, my finger is. And let me just tighten that a little bit more so it doesn't unravel. And that looks good. So right there, hopefully you can see that. All right, so then just stick the needle from the center of where you were on your last stitch, and then just pull it out to the side and hear it pop once you pull it. And then you can just cut off that tail and it's nice and secure. Okay, so we are done with sewing the face from the front and the back. So for next step, we're going to need some kind of glue and I'm using this Westcott Papermate glue pen and you can see you're going to hold it like a pen instead of the regular glue gun or you're holding like a, a gun. Um, and so let me 
just plug this thing in for the moment. And what's nice about this Westcott uh, blue pen is that um, it's light and it has a non-stick nozzle there. And as you could see, currently the color is dark blue. Okay. And that just indicates it's not heated up yet. So once the tip turns red, then you'll know that the blue pen is ready to go. And you, it uses a standard uh, glue stick and you stick it in the, the back of that pen. Let me show you some options for the eyes. I have three different kinds of um, stick-ons that you can use for the eyes. And here's a sample of the wiggly eyes uh, that you can use. And like I said, all of these things you can get from Michaels or Joann's or AC Moore. And then this one I found, and it was a half dome. Uh, I guess it's a rhinestone maybe? But when you use this one, it's nice and shiny and the eyes will look you know, like a beady eye, like you would see in the stuffed animals. And the last option uh, is faceted rhinestones. I don't know if you could see there in the video where it, it has different facets on it. So as you move it around, it will shine and bounce off light. as like if you have a twinkle in the eyes kind of thing. So those are two good options uh, for you to use, uh, but I think I'm going to go with the wiggly eyes because it's so cute. Okay, so let me take out the next pieces. For the tail and for the nose, we're going to be using uh, pom-poms. And I have three different size pom-poms and all different sorts of colors. Okay, so the I have small, medium, and large. And as you could see here, this is the smallest one. And you can use these for eyes as well, uh, if you want different color eyes. And then the next one is here. This is the large and the medium. So I, when I buy these, I usually get the set of the three different sizes. So that in case I need uh, different, different sizes, I already have them all in the same color combinations. So let's see which one to use. So I could use a blue uh, medium size one for the nose there and then have a matching tail in the back and that's using the large one or maybe a green one for the uh, tail whichever one you prefer I just like to match the nose and the tail okay so I've put on the wiggly eyes and now I'm going to glue the nose. As you can see you just have to hold it for a second and the glue sets. And then for the tail you do the same thing. You just take the glue pen or glue gun or any kind of glue that you want and just uh, hold it there for a moment. And look how cute that looks. Now let me just add a little bit more glue doesn't look like there's enough coverage there. Just hold it in. And you're set there. Now your bunny's coming to life. Now for the yellow one, let's do some more wiggly eyes. And you can place the eyes wherever you want on the face. You can try it out first before you put the glue on uh, to see where you want the eyes to be. I prefer the eyes to be uh, close together. And let me just refill uh, the glue gun there. With this particular glue pen, when you see me just yank the uh, spring, that's just to reload the glue pen itself. And sometimes it just uh, squirts out too much. I'm going to go with the white nose on this one to bring out the contrast with the yellow. Oh, look how cute that looks. Alright, so now off to the tail. And you just stick it right in the middle of the two roll. And fluff it up a little bit. 
and adjust anything you like, the ears or the face. Just make sure everything is nice and secure where you want it. Okay, there you go. That looks cute. Okay, so for the last one, just put another set of wiggly eyes. And just be careful when you do use a glue gun, don't hurt yourself because it is very hot. And it cools down very quickly, but I think I prefer to put the glue right on the towels or the washcloths and I just avoid getting burnt. Okay, so for the nose, I think I'm going to go with yellow. I'm going to put that Cadbury egg in there. I want the nose to match the wrapping, the foil wrapping that was on the egg. All right, so this one needs some feet. So I'm going to use the bigger of the pom-pom and just put uh, one on each side of the bottom to give it some, something to stand on. So for the next step, we're going to wrap a ribbon around the neck of this one. And you can put any color you like. Um, and this, will, this is the fun part where you can decorate however you like on the bunnies. So for this particular one, I'm just going to do a bow on the neck. And do a square knot so that the bow doesn't unravel uh, or the ribbon doesn't get lost. Now, when I make a bow, I usually make them upside down. It just looks better for me uh, that way. But you got, you know, do whatever you want to do in terms of making that bow. And then once you're settled, you want to glue down the glow, glue down the bow a little bit uh, with the glue gun right in the middle. And then cut off the ends to make it look a little bit more prettier. Okay, there you go. And this one is done. Okay, so for the yellow one, We'll do the same ribbon and just wrap it around. Like I said, I like to do a double knot on this or a square knot, whichever one you prefer. And it just helps it to stay put in case it unravels with the kids. And then you make your bow. Make the bow secure, pull it tight, and adjust it however you like. And then once uh, I'm satisfied with the bow and the way it looks, I'm going to just glue that middle section to keep it secure. There we go. Mm -hmm. And the last step is just to cut the ends of the bow to make it a little bit more prettier. So I just squeeze the bow in half and just make a V. And that just makes them the ends nice and pointy. Okay. And let's try this one. There we go. That nicely fits. Lovely. Isn't it cute? Okay, and then let's do the pink one. use the red one in there because I really like the way that looked. Okay, so now these are all the bunnies that have been completed. For the third bunny, you could actually put more decorations on the ears, but I don't think the rubber bands are you know that visible, so I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, but uh, I did put an extra piece on the back for the tail. It just look like it was missing something. So now that one is complete. And then the yellow one, uh, as you could see, this was the one that has the opening on the top. And I think the white on white looks uh, pretty good there. And then for this one with the pink, I also made a purple one. So you could see the difference on a white and a different color 
tails and noses. Okay, and there goes the chocolate in the middle. And then I also made one with the same color as the bunny number three, and I used white for the tail and for the nose, so that the color will pop. So there you go. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed learning three ways to make an Easter bunny out of a washcloth. And I wish you a blessed Easter holiday. Hope you join us again for another DIY project by Made by Bertha.